So, hello everyone to today's Global Frame the Tuesday session. And uh, I'm uh, introducing Professor Rezvan Motabalian from the University of Isfahan, who will tell us more um, about their, um, yeah, their work on starting a Persian FrameNet. And without further ado, Professor Motabalian, I would hand over to you. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction. And thank you very much for the opportunity given to me to present my work in Global Frame Net Tuesday talk. Uh, OK. Uh, in this talk, uh, we intend to uh, examine the transferability of the parts of English Frame Net to other languages specifically Persian. To accomplish this task, we consider the concept of motion, since motion events have received much attention in cross-linguistic studies and due to their different lexicalization patterns in typologically diverse languages, they are very useful for examining this compatibility. In this regard, we investigate the challenges that different features of the Persian language and particularly the difference in the way of expressing motion events and this language makes for the compatibility of English frame net with Persian. The next slide, please. Um, to achieve this goal, the present work will be presented as follows. After giving the brief introduction of Persian language and previous works on reusing BFN, in a summary, we will talk about BFN and the theory underlying its uh, construction, and more specifically through providing an example from motion verb, we discuss different components of FrameNet. Next, we discuss challenges for the compatibility of English FrameNet with Persian. Next slide, please. Uh, about Persian language, uh, we can say Persian language, also called Farsi, is an Iranian language within the Indo-Iranian branch of the Indo-European languages. It is the official language of Iran, and two varieties of Persian known as Bari and Tajik are official languages in Afghanistan and Tajikistan. Persian is a prodrop language in which most verbal concepts concepts are expressed through complex predicates. Most Persian complex predicates syntactically consist of two independent elements, an underball element and a light verb. Also the as of a morpheme, a or ye is a linker between some nonverbal lexical heads and their post modifiers. Next slide, please. Many attempts have already been made to reuse the English FrameNet and construct FrameNet in other languages. The most famous of which are Danish, Dutch, Hindi, uh, or Urdu, Latvian, Brazilian, uh, Finnish, Ebro, French, Korean, Swedish, German, Spanish, Italian, uh, Chinese, Japanese, among others. Next slide, please. As Boas points out, the motivation for reusing semantic frames from English for other languages is the idea that frames are universal, similar to Fillmore's original case rules. Next slide, please. However, there is also many investigations, such as Glardy and Baker, uh, 2018, Torrent et al. 2018 showed that in most cases, the frames of the Berkeley frame net data fit best and can serve as the basis for cross language annotations. It has been shown different languages require different adaptation to the frames of BFN as lexical units impose different perspectives, different causative, incoative, and stative alternation to a specificity and generosity of the frames and different entailments of lexical units and different corners status of frame elements and even 
missing elements or for cultural or other linguistic reasons or because of the vagueness of semantic restrictions imposed on certain constituents, metonymic shifts of concrete nouns and pragmatic factors. Next slide, please. Then it is necessary to change some of the BFN's frames and annotation practices and adapt them to other languages. Some researchers attempt to improve the compatibility of BFN frames by relating them to categories from other resources, such as WordNet, VerbNet, and MetaNet, and um, selecting frames based on estimates of a frame's transferability, adding new layers of contextual representation to the FrameNet model, or introducing the interactions between lexical units and constructions of sentences, considering conceptual level network of FrameNet, uh, annotating the morphemes within words in agglutinative languages like Finnish and etc. cetera. Next, next slide, please. Uh, the Berkeley FrameNet corpus-based computational lexicography has been founded in 1997. The aim of this project is to document semantic and syntactic valence information of the English lexicon derived from manually annotated corpus examples. Mm, this project has been done based uh, on the theory of frame semantics. Um, as Petro points out, in frame semantics, where a linguistic unit evokes a frame, the meaning of that linguistic unit is defined in terms of experience-based schematization of a speaker's, a speaker's world, that means frames. Next slide, please. Uh, in FrameNet, each frame consists of the frame name, its definition, frame elements, uh, including core, uh, peripheral elements, and extra automatic elements, canonical examples, lexical units, and frame-to-frame uh, relation. Uh, to illustrate what is in a frame, consider the intransitive form of the verb move, which evokes motion verb defined as a scene in which some entity starts out in one place and ends up in some other place, having covered some space between the two. As you see in example one, her foot uh, moved from the brake to the accelerator. Uh, her food is team, break, source, accelerator, go. Uh, alternatively, the area or direction in which the team moves or the distance of the movement may be mentioned, as you see in example two and uh, three. Uh, and uh, uh, like other events, an act of moving can be described as having occurred, for example, at a particular time and at a particular speed, as you see in example form, time and speed are two of the peripheral frame elements of the frame describing aspects of events more generally. For each frame element that is annotated in uh, these examples, FrameNet also records grammatical functions and phrase type information. Thus in all of, the, the, out, all of these examples, the team is recorded as an external NP, the source and the goal are realized as prepositional phrases, the peripheral frame element time instantiated as a PP and the speed is instantiated as an adverb phrase. Next slide, please. Now about challenges of frame net. Next slide, please. Uh, first of all, we want to deal with frame elements. Uh, word meaning is characterized in terms of experience-based schematizations of the speaker's world. Uh, that means frames in frame net. What is important in designing the frame net then is to obtain the systematic criteria for determining the frames in different languages so that these frames can be used cross-linguistically. According to Fillmore, it is obvious that uh, the frames are determined based on the speaker's background knowledge of the situations or states of affairs that underlie the meaning of lexical items. If we consider the frame of motion, we can expect that it will parallel the same frame elements in different languages. However, different ways of encoding these elements in various languages will affect the coreness status of the frame elements. 
Interested in characterizing lexicalization patterns across languages, Talmi provides us with a typology of motion events. According to the studies, a motion event consists of four internal components, namely figure, ground, path, and motion, and motion, two external components, namely manner and cause, also follow. A figure is an object moving along or towards another object, which is ground through a way called pass, as you see in example five, the pen pencil rolled off the table. As Ptolemy stated, based on encoding pass, languages can be divided into verb framed and satellite framed. Accordingly, verb framed languages are those which conflate pass in the verb, whereas satellite frame languages are those which encode the same component on any element other than verbs. In other words, their frame languages are known as past verb languages, while satellite frame languages are known as manner verb languages. Since frames are cognitive schemas used to interpret events and situations in the world are taken as the basis of frame semantics, typological differences are also expected to affect language frames especially on the corners of status of frame elements. In other words, it is expected that at least in some aspects, some frames will vary from one language to another because the certain world view of a speaker of one language from the scenes around him or her differs from that of a speaker of another language. For instance, since Spanish is a verb frame and English is a satellite frame language, it follows that pass is encoded in the root verb in Spanish, as you see in example seven, but represented as a separate constituent in English, whereas in, uh, uh, in English, uh, as you see in example six, <clears throat> the rock rolled down the hill, the rock moved down the hill rolling. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this does not mean that there is no past verb in English or manner verbs in Spanish. The presence of the motion directional frame in English framelet confirms that there are past verbs in English language. Based on framelet's definition, and this frame a team moves in a certain direction, which is often determined by gravity or other natural and physical forces. As you see in example eight to 10, here, fell, dropped, and toppled are lexical units of motion directional frame. Next slide, please. But the question here is that despite the fact that motion verbs in English are mostly classified as manner verbs in which manner is encoded in the verb, why is there no separate frame for manner motion and frame net? For example, a verb such as swagger, in which manner is encoded, uh, indicates that the act of walking is done with arrogance and pride. But in frame net, this verb is placed in self motion frame. And for this lexical unit, manner is considered as a peripheral element. Ignoring this issue will be particularly effective in transferring English frame net to other languages such as Persian and ultimately affects using FrameNet in cross-linguistic studies. Although in Persian, manner is often encoded in the verb itself, such as paridan or jumping, raksidan or dancing, but cases such as examples 11 and 12 can be found that manner is syntactically represented by separate constituents. As you see in example 11, Ali pa qurur va takabur vare de otaq shod. Ali swaggered into the room and manner is represented by a separate constituent of ba qurur va takabur. And the example 12, abha ba surat dar osman harakat mi kardan. Clouds escorted across the sky again uh, here, manner is syntactically represented by PP constituent, both were at. Uh, okay. Comparing the different behavior of the motion verbs in both Persian and English in, the, in these examples, 
demonstrates the importance of considering this issue in transferring the framenet from one language to another. Next slide, please. The other issue which affects the transferability of the English framenet to other languages is that which semantic features of each frame element are considered fundamental in determining the right frame. What can be seen in English frames about motion verbs is that perhaps due to the role which this issue plays in the lexicalization pattern of the language, sometimes a specific semantic feature of a frame element has become more effective in frame representation. As seen in these examples, 13 to 17, respectively, if the team of the motion lexical unit is liquid, it is placed in the, in the, the fluidic motion frame, as you see in example 13. If the team is made up of many individuals, it is placed in the mass motion frame, as you see in example 14. And if the team is the initiator, it fits into the motion frame, as you see in example 15. If the agent of motion event is a living being, the lexical unit will be in the frame of self motion, as you see in example 16, while if a motion event involves a vehicle and someone who controls it, it will be in the operate vehicle frame, as you see in example 17. This is why sometimes the semantic features of other frame elements are more effective in lexicalization patterns in other languages. Next slide, please. Therefore, in order to choose the right frame in one language and transfer a frame from one language to another, it is important to determine which semantic features of frame elements become more effective in lexicalization and even in meaning shift, such as polysemy and metaphor in dead languages. Although the semantic features of each frame elements show subtle syntactic and semantic differences between lexical units in the same frame or in related frames and can help in cross-linguistic comparing of lexical units and understanding different polysemy processes in various languages, paying too much attention to this issue adds to the complexity of the work. On the other hand, regarding the effect of subcomponents in determining the frame, an ad hoc decision cannot be taken. For example, the, uh, as you see in examples 18 and 19, um, in Richt, Water spilled on the ground, Ketab as we examine of thought, the book fell off the table, the verbs fell uh, of thought and uh, spilled uh, are the same in all aspects. And in both of them, the direction is downward, but in the first verb, team is liquid, and in the second verb, uh, I mean in a spilled team is liquid, and in the second verb, it is solid. However, in FrameNet, the intransitive form of a spill is considered as fluidic motion, but for the verb fall, in which team is solid, the direction is considered more important, and this motion verb is placed in the motion directional frame. Furthermore, it seems that in English FrameNet, sometimes frames are beyond the semantic level and the syntactic structure has also been involved in the specification of the frames. For instance, the causative form of fluidic motion is considered as cause fluidic motion and we have cause motion frame as the causative form of motion. However, in the motion directional or noise motion frames, their causative counterparts are not considered while the transitive form of a motion directional verb such as drop is included in caused motion frame, not caused motion directional. Next slide, please. Therefore, to use the frame net in cross-linguistic studies, 
it may be necessary to consider the effect of frame elements and the semantic features of each element and the lexicalization patterns separately and at different levels. For example, in the more general level of the event of motion, positiveness, then encoding a frame elements such as manner or direction, and finally, encoding effective semantic features of each frame element may be considered. Next slide, please. Another point in this regard is that although causative frames are of special significance as they show the syntactic relationships between frames, it seems that causative frames cannot be considered equivalent to other semantic frames. For example, the verb move is placed in different frames of motion, body movement, change even time, and intentional to act. This shows the polysemous relationship of this verb. Yet the fact that this verb belongs to different frames of motion and cause motion, <coughs> excuse me, does not indicate that it has several meanings. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, both lexical units have the same semantic meanings of movement and are only different in terms of syntactic process. In other words, the verb move can also participate in syntactic process of causation but, but, this, but this does not mean that the original semantic nature of the verb has changed. The existence of different types of causality in different languages and the relationship with semantic features is an issue that should be considered in transferring the framework from one language to another. Next slide, please. In one type, in Persian, there are different types of causality. The form of the verb does not change and the verb with the same form is placed in both causative and non-causative frames as in the verbs rich, poured, and poshit spring. As we've seen, uh, example 20, ab ruizam in rich, Water is spilled on the ground. Uh, uh, and 21, who opera reexamined Licht, he poured water on the ground. As you see in both examples, the same verb Licht is used in both causative and non causative um, frame. The next slide, please. Sometimes the whole verb changes, as in um, example 22 and 23, oftad, goldan reazamin oftad, the pot fell to the ground, u goldan ra reazamin and he threw the pot on the ground. As you see in these examples, different form of the verb are used in causative and non causative frames. Next slide, please. The third type, in the third type, the form of the verb sometimes changes morphologically in such a way that the affix on is added to the present form of the root, as in David, in uh, example uh, 25, and it's a causative form, Davant, in example 24, Malim Ali Ro Darzamine Varzesh Davant. The teacher ran Ali on the sports field. Malim dar zamine varzesh David. The teacher ran on the sports field. But as it is indicated in this examples regarding the event run in English, the same form is used in motion and cause motion frames. The next slide, please. In the fourth type, the verbal part of the compound verb sometimes changes in the causative form as, uh, as in harikat kard, 
uh, as you see in example 26 توپ به سمت دروازه حرکت کرد their positive counterparts uh, become حرکت داد علی توپ را به سمت دروازه حرکت داد علی moved the ball towards the goal as you see the verbal element of compound verb changes to دادن کرد changes to دادن um, as it is shown in, in these examples, contrary to Persian, the verb move in English is used both in causative and non-causative forms. Therefore, the causative relationship between lexical units in both English and Persian is not the same, and this should be considered in transferring English language to Persian. Next slide, please. The polysemy structure is different in various languages, and this causes the presence of the same word as different lexical units in different frames. For example, the verb jump in English is placed in the frames of self-motion, change position on a spade, traversing, attack, etc., while the most frequent equivalent of this verb in impression, paridan, is used with different meanings, jumping, flying, fading, waking up suddenly, twitching, and respectively belongs to different frames, self-motion, ceasing to be, caused to wake, body movement, etc. As it is shown in this example, paridan or jumping in this sense is placed in body movement frame in Persian. His eyelid twitches, as you see, paridan here is placed in body movement frame in Persian. Next slide, please. The existence of a small number of simple verbs in, in the Persian language, approximately 115, and the tendency of the Persian language to combination and incorporation make the process of polysemy in Persian more complex. In other words, the presence of a large number of compound verbs in the Persian language made with a certain number of light verbs, approximately 16, such as kardan, do, zadan, hit, greftan, catch, doshtan, have, amadan, come, avardan, bring, khordan, eat, Etc. And the different behaviors of these verbs make the Persian language completely different from English. Next slide, please. The verbal part in combination and incorporation with the nonverbal one sometimes fully retains their heavy equivalent meaning, as can be seen in example 29 and uh, 13, the incorporation of the PP complement and NP complement and the omission of the preposition BA and the objective case marker RA respectively yield a compound verb in which the main meaning of the heavy equivalent of, of this verb is mostly preserved. On ha ali robo chagu zadan, and as you see in 29b, aha, ali ro chagu zadan. Here, the position ba is omitted and um, chagu is incorporated to zadan. And in example 30, as you see, ali poyash ro be uzad, ali be u pozad. Here again, case marker ra is omitted and the object is incorporated to the verb. And we have the compound verb of pozadan. As a whole, um, zadan or hitting refers to the event accompanied by short and sudden or um, consecutive movement or removal and creating or setting up. One of the most common meaning of hitting is to bring your hand or an object you are holding against, against somebody or something quickly and with force. Zadan or hitting with this meaning is placed under the frame cause harm, which is defined in frame net as follows. The words 
in this same described situation in which an agent or a cause injures a victim, the body part of the victim, which is most directly um, affected, may, be, may also be mentioned in the place of the victim. Based on this definition, the core elements of this frame are agent, body part, victim, and cause, as it is shown in examples 29A um, and B in Persian, the object used uh, to cause injury or instrument as a nonverbal component sometimes incorporates with the verb zadan or hitting, making complex predicates such as chahu zadan or to a step or other examples such as chalok zadan or to whip, chub zadan or to a stick or etc. Out of these lexical units evoke the frame of cause harm, or as it is shown in 30A and B, the body part of the agent can incorporate with the verb zadan, such as po zadan, or to kick, and more examples such as mosh zadan, or to punch, again evoking the cause harm frame. Next slide, please or the body part of the victim can incorporate with the verb zadan, like gardan zadan, or to be head, or uh, and like zadan, or to cut vessel, as uh, you see in uh, example 31, on ha gardan ali ro zadan, they beheaded ali, on ha ali ro gardan zadan, here again gardan zadan is a compound verb, they seem to be related uh, again to cause a harm frame, but based on English frame net, this lexical unit uh, evoke the frame of killing. In example 32, bolo or up is affixed to the verb raft or went. As you see, Ali bolo yitap the raft, Ali went to the top of the hill. And in example 32B, Ali has tapped bolo raft here. Bolo is incorporated to raft to the verb. Uh, here, its, firm, its frame is changed from self motion to motion directional, quite contrary to its English equivalent. The next slide, please. Sometimes the light verb retains only some of the semantic features of its heavy equivalent, and in some cases indicates only the aspect of the compound verb, uh, such as uh, zadan, uh, which shows that the event is ac accompanied by short or consecutive uh, movements, as in examples 33 to 35, as you see, boron, zad, that uh, here refers to short time of raining. It rained, it means it rained shortly. Uh, or in 34, Ali Disha Mesfak Zad. Zadan here refers to short and consecutive movement. Uh, he means it means Ali brushed uh, his teeth la uh, last night. And uh, in 30 in 35, Ali Lebos Hoyashro Utu Zad. Here, Zadan refers to short and consecutive movement. Ali ironed his clothes. Um, okay. But gereftan uh, or taking, as in uh, 36, which indicates the beginning of the event and has the initial aspect, and keshidan, pulling, which indicates the, the continuity of the event, in example, 37, as you see, uh, in example 36, Boron Gereft, Gereftan here refers to a start of raining. It has started to rain, uh, in contrary to uh, 33 example, Boron Zad, which means it rained shortly. But here, Boron Gereft, it means it has started to rain. Ali Lebos Hoyash Ro Utu Keshid, in example 37. Ali Keshidan uh, here refers to continuous movement. Uh, and this uh, sentence means Ali ironed his clothes. Uh, 
and Keshidan refers to continuous moment. Uh, okay. And these examples, the nonverbal element carries the most semantic load in compound verbs and determines the frame. The next slide, please. Therefore, according to the observations of Persian language data, it can be said that there is no clear boundary between the types of light verbs and even between light and heavy verbs in Persian. In other words, one can only have a continuous look at the meaning of light verbs. This means that at one end of the continuum are verbs that have retained their heavy equivalent meaning and at the other end of the continuum are light verbs that have been emptied of their original meaning. And the main burden of meaning is borne by the nonverbal part. In between, there are verbs that either retain some components of their original meaning or have only a spectral meaning. In the case of light verbs in English, however, this person argues that these verbs are devoid of meaning or have very little semantic participation in the meaning of common verbs, such as take a walk. This person considers the use of a simple verb alone instead of the whole construction of a compound verb as the, the reason for the emptiness of light words in terms of meaning, such as watch. Therefore, it is expected that in, in the uh, English frame, given that the nonverbal element carries the heaviest semantic load in compound verb, verbs, this element determines the frame and not its verbal uh, part, but the behavior, behavioral differentiation of light verbs in the Persian language, language causes the verbal element in some compound verbs and in some nonverbal elements to determine the verb frame. Next slide, please. About syntactic alternation, unlike Levin, who uses the same syntactic structure as a criterion for classifying words that have similar concepts in frame that experience space schematization, the speaker's world plays the key role. This causes the lexical units in a frame to have different syntactic alternations according to their different semantic features. The various balance structures of these lexical units and their correspondence of form and meaning are displayed in the frame net aligned with numerous examples. Sometimes changing the syntactic structure of a lexical, lexical unit causes it to blind to um, multiple frames, such as intransitive and transitive run blinds to the self motion frame and cause motion frames or load included in filling or placing frames based on its different syntactic structure. Next slide, please. It is quite clear that the syntactic alternation of the same lexical units in English and Persian can be completely different. And this difference must be taken into account in the Persian frame net. More importantly, sometimes due to the behavioral, behavioral differences between the two languages, there are some syntactic alternations as specified to a language. For example, in Persian, the existence of separable compound verbs sometimes causes a complement or a joint to be placed between the components of a compound verb. Um, okay, like uh, example 38, Ali otaq ro khub rang zad, Ali painted the room well. And in uh, 38B we have Ali otaq ro rang khubi zad. Here the joint khub um, is uh, inserted between the uh, non-verbal and verbal element of compound verb. Uh, okay, the next slide, please. Or as mentioned before, due to the phenomenon of incorporation in Persian, the NP or PP complement can be incorporated into the verb, as in example 39, uh, here, again, we can omit uh, the preposition 
the B and we have, uh, we can have, uh, excuse me, we can um, omit Ra, case marker of Ra, and we have Ali be, Ali be divar rang that the compound verb of rang that in 39B. Okay, next slide, please. Metaphorical frame to frame relation. Um, contemporary approaches to conceptual metaphor theory, I mean, Lakoff and Johnson, 1980 or and 1999, identify the central role of the frame structure in metaphor analysis. A metaphor is a mapping process uh, from a well-known and mostly concrete conceptual domain, uh, I mean, the source frame onto a less known and mostly abstract conceptual domain and which is the target frame. One of the advantages of BFN is that it includes metaphor frame to frame relation. However, when translating the English frame net into Persian, their different metaphorical relationships should be taken into account. Although sometimes the metaphorical relationship between the frames is the same in both Persian and English, there are cases that indicate different metaphorical relationships. Next slide, please. For example, in the case of price and temperature, both languages use uh, the verbs of bolo uh, raftan or go up and poin or madan or come down. But in contrast with Persian, English uses the verb jump to, uh, as you see in example uh, 14, 41. Qaymat ha bolo raft, prices went up. Uh, but here in Persian, we have prices jumped by 70% last year, but we haven't the equivalent of jump in Persian in this sense. Therefore, English in addition to these uh, two verbs, jump also has the metaphorical relationship with the frame change position on a scale. Next slide, please. Or in the case of paridan or jumping, as it is clear in the following examples, the verb placed in self-motion frame has a metaphorical relationship with the frame interrupt process example 42, both in Persian and English. Uh, like Ali uh, Ali jumped in his sister's words. Though it has a metaphorical relationship with the the, yeah, <clears throat> though it has metaphorical relationship with the frame of change of phrase in Persian, there is no such uh, relationship in English as shown in example 43, uh, alcohol parid, alcohol ev evaporated, and we haven't alcohol um, jumped, in, uh, we haven't alcohol jumped in uh, English. Uh, okay, the next slide, please. Regarding metaphors, uh, the development of rep uh, repository of conceptual metaphors or metanet and its integration with framenet seem to improve the transferability of BFN to other languages, including Persian. The next slide, please. Uh, okay, the impact of culture. Speakers of different languages sometimes have different attitudes towards a phenomenon due to different cultures, which is effective in defining, determining frame elements, such as the lexical units of marriage or text or funeral. Moreover, differences in a speaker's cultural uh, worldview sometimes cause the presence of words in one language that are not found in another language. Next slide, please. For example, in Persian, there is a phenomenon called Taruf Kardan, besides uh, the sense of usual offering here, this term evokes the scheme in which the person offers something simply out of respect and politeness. And it is quite clear to the addressee that this offer was for respect. So, or he or she does not accept the offer. Um, and uh, he or she just thanks for the mutual respect. This event is illustrated in, in conversation 44. As you see uh, in 44, uh, the 
یا ای پرسن ای سس چه پیراهن قشنگی برای خودت خریدی what a beautiful dress you bought yourself and, and uh, the address is uh, قابلی, uh, قابلی ندارد uh, you can, uh, it means you can have it it's a mere nothing uh, and uh, uh, person A says متشکرم برازنده صاحبش است thanks it fits you yourself next slide please Investigating the transferability of English framework to Persian, we can conclude that this ta task includes a number of challenges, some of which are inherited from the nature of the Persian language and others stem from the specification of the frame in framework. It was shown thereby that there are differences in the coreness status um, syntactic representation of the frame elements syntactic alternations and frame to frame relations. Moreover, the impact of culture should also be considered. These issues make the form and meaning correspondent and consequently the valence tables of equivalent lexical units placed in the same frame to be different in these languages. Furthermore, the present paper um, supports the uh, yeah, the present work supports the findings of pre previous researches that augmenting existing BFN with information on the interaction of lexicon and grammar, cultural scripts, typologically crucial semantic features of lexical units and BFN access to other resources such as WebNet, WordNet and MetaNet can improve transferability of BFN to other languages. Next slide, please. Okay, in the future, I hope uh, we can take uh, steps towards automated building of Persian frame net and uh, even um, take some steps uh, towards building Persian frame net as whole. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, thanks uh, for your attention. Uh, I would like to say thanks to uh, Global Framenet team, uh, specifically to Professor Chulo, um, who provides uh, the, me with me uh, provides this opportunity with me, and um, I like to uh, say thanks to him and all the uh, Global Framenet team. Thank you.